I've been collecting and raising praying mantis as pets for a few years now. Normally I'll get stuff that's more exotic, that's not native to where I live. So I would always keep them contained to make sure they can't get out. Um, but hearing a story from a friend's grandmother, she used to collect the praying mantis from outside her house and bring them indoors to live on her houseplants. And I always thought that was kind of interesting. And when my girlfriend came home one day, holding a praying mantis that she had captured from our front patio, um, we decided to let it live on the plants we had inside of our house. My immediate concerns were, would it be able to catch enough food? And would the, the periodic misting of those houseplants be enough water for it to drink? So we decided to just let it loose in our house. It turns out there is a benefit to living in a 100 year old house, which is there are some bugs that do manage to get inside. Once in a while, we'll get the occasional summer fly. Um, we also have an invasive species called elm seed bugs, which I think are from the Mediterranean, which kind of took root in areas of Colorado and Idaho and Utah where I live and have become a bit of a nuisance. We have an, an old elm tree in our backyard that's not doing so hot and it's filled with them. So when it gets real hot, upwards of 100 degrees, they'll try to get inside the house to cool off. So I think that's mostly what he's eating. I'm assuming it's a he. I'm pretty sure it's a Chinese mantis. I think it's a boy. At the beginning, when we released him in the plants, we lost him. And I didn't see him for what felt like maybe a month, two months. And I just assumed he had died. Um, and then one day, my girlfriend started shouting and I came out to see what the deal was. And she had found him and he was still healthy, living in whatever kind of plant this is. Um, immediately we spritzed him with some water. Um, you could do that on the larger species, the Chinese doesn't seem to mind. I wouldn't do that on um, the more delicate species, which might bug him, uh, stress him out a little bit. And he started drinking the water and it became pretty clear to me that he'd been eating these little elm seed bugs, uh, which you're gonna see him do. I wish he'd get the flies more, but I think it's difficult for him to, to get all the way over to them because they're so fast. I wouldn't suggest it if you have a cat or a dog. I think the dog will probably be too dumb to see it because they move so slowly and they are camouflaged. But I would think that cats are a little keener, be able to see them and maybe, maybe attack them. Yeah, he lives in our house and he's kind of our protector. He eats the invasive bugs, uh, harasses the flies, I think unsuccessfully most of the time trying to catch them. He does disappear from time to time and we don't know where he's gone. Uh, right now, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> like he's he's hidden well enough that I don't know if I could find him if I looked. It's also not a single houseplant, but kind of a entire window display that we built. So he could really be anywhere. It's easy to find him if he's just sitting on the windowsill, but usually he's up higher, where he camouflages into one of the two dozen plants we have here. Yeah, but I like him. He's almost, uh, I don't know, an extra roommate that doesn't pay rent. So if you're interested in doing this yourself and bringing in a praying mantis to live in your houseplants, definitely get something that's native. Uh, Chinese mantis get pretty big. You might want something a little smaller like the religiosa or a Carolina mantis if you live in the United States. If you live somewhere else, I'm sure that you have a lot of species available as well. The benefits of having a free-range home mantis is really that they're harmless, they're clean, um, you can pick them up and handle them if you want to, they really can't hurt you. I sometimes get asked what praying mantis are as far as what they're related to, uh, whether it's grasshoppers or something and they're actually related to cockroaches very, very distantly. It's almost as if uh, a cockroach were a rat and the praying mantis kind of evolved into a wolf. Um, the other thing they're related to, which is kind of strange, is termites. People don't tend to think of termites as communal cockroaches, but that's really what they are. Um, it's kind of the same thing if you think about rats versus naked mole rats that live in colonies. That's kind of what termites have done. Um, which is why they're so different from ants. 
And I think they also don't get along. <laughs> if the movie Ants has told me anything. The ancient Greeks and Romans believed that if a traveler was lost, the praying mantis would help you find your way home. I think that's really nice. I like that there is some mythology behind the praying mantis. So in my home, we have a tiny green brown protector that keeps invasive bugs at bay that we occasionally get to say hello to when we see him. That's a bit of fun trying to discover where he's hidden himself this time. Um, there, is, there is a rewarding feeling when we can find him. Right now, he's, it's a mystery as to where he is. I might find him later. He'll pop up uh, time to time. Um, initially, when we found him, he was much greener. And I think because there's less access to water, less you know, dew that accumulates in the morning, his biological response has been to turn a little bit browner rather than green. I haven't seen his molts, though. Praying mantis, like a lot of arthropods, will molt as they grow their skin will be too small, so they'll have to kind of break out and they'll leave their skin kind of dangling somewhere. I haven't been able to find any of those. I think if it really came down to it and you weren't certain if you'd have food available for it to catch, you could go to a pet store, get crickets, and maybe just hand feed it. Um, if you just get a small pair of tongs, you can deliver the cricket to the, to the mantis without worrying about crickets running around your house as well. I have to be honest, having praying mantis as pets for as long as I have, crickets have gotten away. So I do not know if there is a colony <laughs> living somewhere under the floorboards, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. I don't actually know what any of these plants are. This is my girlfriend's collection. So there's a lot of weird stuff here that I could not identify. I wish I was more of a plant guy, um, but you know, you end up being a bug guy and you kind of just live with that reality. Our plants have done well enough that they've overgrown a bit and they all kind of touch, so he really has free reign to get to any position he wants across this windowsill, um, which I'm sure he takes advantage of. I would definitely say he's not overeating. He's definitely kind of skinny, um, but that's not uncommon for a male. If it were a female, I would expect it to be much larger in the abdomen. Um, so I think he's eating well enough that he's okay. Um, I definitely shouldn't handle him too much. I don't want to stress him out, but I'll do it for the video. So yeah, is a free roaming home praying mantis guard dog for you? Uh, yeah, if you, as long as you don't have a cat, I think, I think anyone can do it. Um, I've actually really had a good time just kind of looking for him in the morning. And when I do find him, uh, giving him a light mist, watching him drink, it's been, um, yeah, kind of a fun activity. I haven't made videos in a while. COVID kind of has me down, I'm kind of just depressed, stuck at home. Um, yeah, and I'd like to make more. So if you like this or any other content I do, uh, please like the video, subscribe, do all that normal YouTube stuff. And I hope you have a really great rest of your day. Thank you.